start a new series this month called CJCC Church. I couldn't think of anything else to call it and it's based off of one scripture where Jesus, this is repeated to me over and over and over again through 21 days of prayer and fasting and at the time we start praying and everybody's saying, what in the world's going to happen in our country? <laughs> and I said, over and over and over, we're doing what we're supposed to be doing, we're praying, we're praying, we're praying and over and over and over again God repeated one thing to me every day, and he said, I am in control. How many of y'all believe God is in control? Let me hear you say amen. It may not look like it, but God is in control. And this verse just kept jumping out at me. Jesus said it, and it's the foundation of this month and, and the messages I'm going to be preaching. And so uh, I know he's in control, and uh, I want to ask you to stand and find Matthew chapter 16 on your iPhone, your iPad your device or your Bible. I love, and when I'm listening to anybody preach, I have my Bible, I'm making notes in my Bible. I encourage you to go old school and bring your Bible and make notes in it. If you're afraid to make notes in it, go put that Bible on the shelf where you can look at it and go get you one that you can call a using Bible and make notes in it. And so write notes, circles and all kinds of stuff. Buy you one with a margin in it where you got plenty of space I can I use the Bible apps too and I love them you know but they're hard to keep up with notes and so forth so I, I use, encourage you to use a paperback Bible bring it to church with you but for I have it on the screen you can take a picture of that and leave and look at that but let's look at it and just read it together Matthew 16 verse 18 Jesus he's uh, asking them he said who y'all think I am and he asked Peter who do you think who do they say I am and he answered him and then Jesus said look Peter in the eye Peter's a rough sucker. He, if he'd have been born in this day, he'd be going to a cowboy church, I promise you. And he had a lot of hang-ups in his life, a lot of problems. He wasn't scared of nothing. And he said, I believe you're the living God. And Jesus said to him, you didn't find that on social media or read it in a book, did you? And he said, no, that, he didn't exact, exactly say that. But he, he said, uh, the Holy Spirit, the Lord revealed that to you. And he said, yes, sir. And he said, you're right. And he looked at Peter, and this is what he said. He's looking at us right now, and this is what Jesus says. Verse 18, chapter 16 of Matthew. He says, And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. Jesus called the church my church. It's not some other church. All of us, he called Circle J. He said, my church. I'm going to build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus that you open up the word of God to us today. Burn it in our hearts. Allow the Holy Spirit to light the word of God in us like kindling in a fire. And we walk out of here ready to charge hell with a water pistol, making a difference for you. With, through your power, through your strength, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Have a seat. Appreciate all the folks coming out. It's an awesome crowd. Thank you so much for everybody. I appreciate the Dream Team separating all these chairs and all the extra services that we're doing so we can get people in. I love the respect that people have for each other. Thank you so much. And so Jesus is saying simply right here, he called it my church. Very personal. He's saying the church is plan A. There is not going to be a plan B. God's not going to come down in the four-stage region right on top of the post office and say, hey, everybody, here's where we're at. This is what we're going to do now. No, God's going to use the church. Jesus said, I'm going to build people like you, Peter, that are rough, people that have had some bad 
uh, mistakes in their life. I mean, Peter was a man's man. He wasn't no skinny jean preacher, I promise you. He, he even at the last day should have been his most strong, strong, powerful moment. He'd been with Jesus doing ministry with him for three years, and they come to get Jesus in the garden, and he goes back to his old self. He takes somebody's sword out, and he chops off a guy's ear right there. He's a man's man. He's ready to fight, son. He's ready to get after it. He's going to protect his pastor right there, Jesus. And he jumped out in the middle, and G P Peter he did that, and Jesus had to stop him and say, Hey, Peter. Hang on a second, buddy. Sit down, buddy. I got this. And he reaches down out of the dirt, grabs an old bloody ear, sticks it back on the guy's head. And that's the kind of guys that are in Cowboy Church. That's the kind of gals that are in Cowboy Church. Rough. We got broken past. We got broken hearts, some of us. We got scars all over us. But we got heart. We got a heart for the Lord. And so. When we started Circle J Cowboy Church, um, I, I, I sang country music for the wrong reasons. And for a long time, I had to get away from even Christian country music because it was my link to my old lifestyle. And then I came to know the Lord when I was about 29 years old. And you know my story if you've been around here. But I began to to go into ministry and what I did is I used the music Christian country music to go reach the lost and one of the greatest opportunities I ever had was being on the living water tour and it lasted actually we did it for a whole year traveling around the country and we would set it up like what you would know as maybe a Billy Graham crusade and we'd go into churches and help them and I saw over and over and again that I didn't like what I was seeing in churches and I'm not trying to be judgmental. There's a difference in judgment and discernment. The 90%, 99% of their budgets, if sometimes 100% of their budgets, were tied to for everybody inside the church walls. And the budgets and the people had this internal focus. And that's what our ministry was, was to go in and help them do outreach events. And they'd bring the cowboy hat in because it's something different. And we'd do concerts and try to get people in. And we did. That first year, we had about 20% of the souls. We had about 600 decisions through the Living Water Tour over those two periods, two years period. It was awesome, unbelievable thing of documented people that made decisions to follow Christ. And so, but the first year, what, we, what happened is they, uh, they, they uh, about 20% of the souls came from, uh, or 80% of the souls came from 20% of the dates. They were the ones that weren't in the church. People didn't want to come to church. Just like they are today they didn't want to come to church even with me being there as a recording artist they didn't want to come hear me do a concert they didn't want to hear me preach you know this it's because it's in a church building and so there were these barriers that kept people and we realized that the second year we booked about 80 percent of the dates outside away from the church we got churches involved and churches helped and they got involved and we did all this and it was a powerful thing because people came uh, and when they would go to a PRCA rodeo that I was singing at or a fairgrounds or something like that and all of a sudden hundreds and hundreds of souls I remember one concert there were over 150 decisions in one concert alone where I would sing and then preach the Word of God powerful time but I came out of that glory be to God glory be to God I came out of that with a, a bad opinion of the church overall I didn't want to be a pastor because I didn't want to be like any church that I went to not one single church that I feel like I wanted to build a church like or be a part of that not one all across America they were so inverted they just focused on themselves and so religious and all these rules and and you know that it was just and I didn't want to be a pastor of that I was trying to help that I actually told God that I was never going to be a pastor little input here don't ever tell God what you are or what you ain't gonna do <laughs> it don't work that way he then put me in the middle of a black neighborhood full-time leading worship and as associate pastor of the church and and I leading worship and but we it, they were very evangelistic they let me go out and do the touring and stuff they loved me going out and doing that I quit the money deal went into ministry and so it, I came out of that just, you know, I didn't want to be a pastor. I didn't want to be a pastor. But 
I know that we, we began to pray and, and ask God, what is it? And I said, God, if you're going to let me, if you want me to start a church, especially a cowboy church, Circle J became the mission church of First Baptist Wake Village where I was on staff. And we started this, and I was trying to find a pastor because I sure didn't want to be the pastor of it. I didn't want to be a pastor of any church. And so, and, but yet God's got me in ministry here. I remember we'd do two services over there. I'd come out with a double-breasted suit and come running out my office with a cowboy hat on. <laughs> and they, they were already doing the music, and I'd come running in here and preach. And that's the way it started. But I began to pray. I said, God, if you're going to give us a church, would you please give me a church of people that got a real relationship with Jesus Christ instead of all the religion Instead of all about them, instead of all the comfort, everybody thought things ought to be run inside the walls and no decisions being made outside of the church. Give me a church that's not instead of religion. Give me a church that sees worshiping God not as a duty but as a joy. And Circle J Cowboy Church was born out of that, was born out of that. And, and I'm going to go fast today. I want to warn you. I'm going to throw a bunch of scriptures at you. And if you don't have a pen and piece of paper or putting it in your iPhone or whatever, making notes, it's going to feel like you got some bullets going over your head because we're going to look at the Word today, okay? So get ready. Y'all ready? Let me hear you say, I'm ready. ready. Come on, let's go. So look at Romans. Look at Romans chapter 12, verse 11. This is the picture of what, in Scripture, of what Jesus says is my church right here. Romans 11, 12, excuse me, chapter 12, verse 11. He says, do not be slothful in zeal, but be fervent in spirit and serve the Lord. Don't be slothful. Don't be lazy in zeal. Be fervent. And that's what I see as our dream team, the body of Christ, the Circle J Cowboy Church. There have been a lot of great people that have gone through leadership in Circle J, but I have to say the dream team today is the best we've ever had. They have more heart more toughness, more guts, more not quit in them than anyone we've ever had in the history. And now it's been 15 years going on 16. And so because they, they, you, they've been tested in the last 12 months in our country, they've done nothing but give sacrifice their time, their abilities, their earthly treasures to serve us all, to give the public help, hope, encourage, do anything to keep us together over and over again. They're full of zeal. And during this plague, they just rose to the occasion with zeal, with fervor, with serving the Lord, exactly what the Lord is saying do here. But Jesus, he, he, there was a group of people he didn't like in the church. They were turning away from him. And it's in Matthew 15, verse 18. I mean, Matthew 15, verse 8 and 9. Look at that. Matthew 18, 15. I'll get it here in a minute. Chapter 15, verse 8 and 9. And Jesus said, This people that he didn't that he's talking about, this people, they honored me with their lips, but their heart was far from me. They honored him, went to church, had church with their lips, but their hearts were far from me. In vain they worshiped me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. All the time I have people say, why are you doing a growth track? Why are you doing a spiritual gift survey? Why, are you, why don't you read the Bible and see what it says about Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 through 17. Go equip the church for the works of ministry. There's four things that God's crazy about. He wants lost people to be saved. He wants saved people to be pastored. He wants pastored people to be trained and trained people to go be mobilized. The church is not to come sit right here. It's to be mobilized. And so over and over and over again, we see that. And so... Across America, that's what I saw were churches that weren't mobilized, <laughs> that weren't getting out of the walls, weren't, weren't trying to use their budget dollars, their buildings to reach the lost. It was all about them. That's what I'm talking about. It's the traditions of church. People say, why aren't you doing things the way you did in traditional church? Well, you find what we're doing that's not in the Bible, and I'd love to change it in a, in a New York second. But what we're doing is in the Bible. That's why we're going through this series. It's a lot of those traditions that we grew up with in church that are in verse 9. In vain do not worship me, teaching as doctrines. It's like as doctrines, something we're supposed to do in church, but it's not in the Bible. As doctrines, the commandments of men. It's what your granddaddy did, so you do it. It's what your grandmama did, so you do it. But 
it's maybe not in the Bible. So we've got to be careful of that. I had a, a horse. I'm talking about heart today. That's the title of the message, heart. I had a horse that probably had more heart or as much heart as maybe. I've ridden some great horses uh, in my life. I really have. I've ridden a couple studs that won the world. I, I've, I, so you got to understand, when I say this sucker had heart and he compares to the top horses, he, he, I mean, we're talking about amazing, amazing heart. And there's a yellow horse that I had, uh, and he's a powerful machine. <laughs> He was pretty cool. A lot of your kids, uh, we used to come up here to the arena and drag kids around on a shovel. He just loved to pull. And, and uh, he, we'd tie a rope and I'd dally on the saddle horn and the kids would just take turns one after another. I'd tie a little rope to a saddle and I'd drag them around, around the arena. And it, it, he just over and over and over. And he'd just lay into a saddle horn and just drag, 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 drag. And just love it. Knew he was making everybody smile. He's just a powerful horse. Here's a picture of him. Look at it. And this is Ty before this is out here in the arena before we put the roof on on that puppy and he's dragging his sister beth on that side on that shovel and that's me in the background i got my cowboy hat backwards and i got my knees up on the swells acting like i'm a jockey and i'm we're racing you know and that's that yellow horse right there just laying into the saddle horn just running on he loved that he had so much heart we'd be working cattle and a lot of times i'd be sorting cows from from calves and i remember just time after time after time, they're pushing cattle to me, and my job is to let the calves go by and hold the cows, and uh, or vice versa. But we were separating them so we could work them. And a cow, you know, they decide to go past you, and they're going to come running. And these, a lot of these Corianti cattle and Longhorn cattle, you know, they're pretty intimidating when they come at you with these big old horns. But that horse had so much heart, he would just jump in the middle of a cow's face and do whatever he could. It's not like you're reining a, a horse over there to, to stop a cow. I would just put his head down and just encourage him with my foot over there. And that sucker would jump down in front of a cow running wide open straight at him. And he would jump over there like a big Tasmanian devil and get down low on the ground. And his eyeballs would be dead level with that cow's eyeballs. And he would sit out there and them ears be pent back and that cow slide up to him and go, whoo, this horse is serious. Everybody else would rein their horse over there and the cow would run right underneath the horse's neck or hit the horse. But he had so much heart. He would help me so much. And uh, he just over and over and over again, he literally died working cows. He wouldn't quit. I remember times he would work so hard that I'd had to quit and go put him in a creek he just put so much heart into everything he did. He died one day because I wore out three young horses and we had a bunch of cattle we were shipping, about 750 head trucks lined up back to back to back to back. And I took him to practice for a ranch rodeo. I wasn't even going to ride him. I was riding all my young horses. I wore all them out and the, the water had drained out for whatever reason there. And he sat out there all day long, got dehydrated. Everybody's horse is dead. I go untie him from the tra trailer and we finish the day's work. He got dehydrated. That night we went weighing cattle out at the scales. I turned him loose. He ain't had nothing to eat. He went and ate grass. I just turned him loose in the pasture where we were working cattle. And he didn't go down. I didn't I shouldn't have done that. And I impacted his gut and he called it and died the next day. Because he worked so hard, dehydrated himself. And I just I learned a hard lesson that day. Well, that's what I'm talking about today is heart. That heart of that horse. And I'll say this. A horse that has heart is better than ten horses that have ability. A horse that has heart is better than ten horses that have ability. And that's what I see in Circle J Cowboy Church. We're a church that has heart. Now, we may have broken lives, broken marriages, broken uh, scars, but we have zeal, we have passion, we have energy. We got a bunch of things from the past. That, there's a big thing when somebody becomes forgiven. Amen. I mean, it gets you when you. The more you've done, it seems like, and you get forgiven for. The more you're set free, and the more you want to charge hell with a water pistol. So there's three things I'm going to talk about today. Three points of why we're the church. Jesus says he's talking about my church. Why Circle J. CJCC is what we call it, is but the my church that he's talking about. 
and that the gates of hell are not going to prevail against Circle J Cowboy Church. Three areas that we have heart and is proven in the foundations of where this church began. It's all biblical. Number one, look at this. We have a heart for prayer. Big time heart for prayer. That's why we're praying for the lost right here. That's why we got this sheet we got sitting out. That's why we've created a website. Miss Tammy's got all this organized. All you got to do is put the the, uh, the the names in the website. Go cjcc.church, sit the prayer request, put the names in our intercessor prayer team. That's why we got an intercessor prayer team doing all this. That's why we have prayer small group. That's why we have first Wednesday prayer service. This last Wednesday we prayed through uh, right here. Every single person had this list, prayed through every name. And then we came back again at the end and prayed for these names together. It was powerful. That's why we have 21 days of prayer and fasting, two times a year. It came really from a foundation of Wallace Edgar, if you know him. It, when I was there, we would many times he'd lead us for a week of prayer and fasting. Or 21 days or a month. I remember one time, 90 days of prayer and fasting we signed up on a day we take each week and so that foundation you got to understand me as a young man accepting Jesus Christ was put into me by Wallace Edgar and other pastors prayer is a foundation of Circle J Cowboy Church look at Matthew 21 verse 13 and he said Jesus is saying this he says it's written my house shall be called a house of prayer but you've made it a den of robbers. And here's the next verse is James 5, 16. This is the very verse that is the foundation. It's the theme verse for all of our small groups. James 5, 16 says, Therefore, confess your sins to one another. In small groups, take the mask off. Get somebody you trust that you can, you can ask to help you. Therefore, confess your sins to one another. Confess your sins to one another and pray for one another. It says, and you'll be healed. And the prayer of a righteous person has great power as it's working. And so we make prayer our first response, not our last resort. And so this is, this is it. So, number one, we have a heart for prayer. Can I get a big old amen? amen. We do. It's serious. We understand everything. You know, the, the three main awakenings of great revivals in the world happened all based on prayer to begin those. And so we believe that. The second thing, the second reason the gates of hell are not going to prevail against us, no matter what happens. It doesn't mean we're not going to lose some battles. We're not going to get beat up, chewed up, fight, lose, have some wounded along the way. But in the end, we're going to win the fight, and the gates of hell will not prevail against us. Number two, look at this. It's because we have a heart for praise and worship. We have a biblical heart for praise and for worship. you got to understand, you got a crazy preacher. I started in music. I under, you got to understand, I've been in Nashville. I've, I know what sound system excellence is. I've been a producer of probably 20 different albums where I've been the guy mixing the guys in these things, national things. I've been a national recording artist, all this stuff, and touring around. I've seen, I know what it's like to stand up there with a little boom box. One of those, uh, those things you dance and giggle at and you sing, and you know what they're called? Well, Y'all do it. Karaoke box versus having a big old sound system and lights where you can see people and versus the back of the room's brighter than the front of the room and people up there in the dark and there's focus on everything else and you're ch chasing squirrels through there because you can't see what's going on. All, the, all this stuff, I know what it's like. The difference in feeling worship in your chest through <laughs> that kick drum and that bass versus not being able to even hear the front, the, the vocal and not understanding what they're saying. So all that excellence... This, I mean, this building is built around music and excellence and reduce, reduce barriers that keep people from coming to church. We, the walls are slanted because we put a, paid somebody to put a pink noise generator in here, and they're slanted so this sound sounds so good. And this, all this stuff, it's put in as a heart of worship. It's put in to honor God. The band came up here yesterday at 430. Tommy Vaughn's up here. He's, he's trying to figure things out. The band's figuring, you know, last week we had all kinds of sound issues. No, that's their sacrifice of praise. They know how to do that. They came up and worked on that. 
So not a bobble today. It's their sacrifice of praise. They drove, I mean, Tommy over here lives over in Foreman. Marlon over here is driving all the way from Hillbilly Country. Where Locksburg, there you go. He drives through a bunch of hillbillies to get all the way down here, does he? I'm telling you, worship is a big part of our church. I asked the band to do four things, and they did them every week. I said, be an icebreaker. Be evangelistic. That first song, man, if somebody come out of the bars, they, they, that is country as country as dirt. And our whole band, they can't do anything unless they make it sound country. No matter what they sing, that harp's going to get out there. I told Marlon, I said, man, you sound like Willie Glover. And I'll tell you one thing, it's a miracle I'm even here as your preacher because I told Willie Glover if he ever left his church, I was going with him because I liked his picking so much. You got to understand that music is such a heart of the foundation of this church from day one. We've been the best there is anywhere around here. From the day one, we've asked the best of the best to honor the Lord and lead us in worship and to reach the lost. People come in here and hear that music, and I'll tell you what, a song can get to somebody's heart ten times faster than it sure can my preaching. And, and it does every Sunday, and so it's a very powerful thing. I ask them to be an icebreaker. I ask them to, to reach the lost, and I ask them to lead us in worship for people that are saved and get us ready for a message. All scriptural. Look at these. Write these down if you want to look at them. Great. Psalms 100, verse 4. Somebody bring me some water, please, because I'm running out of gas here. Them donuts and all them chocolate cookies got my throat all choked up. <laughs> so psalms 100 verse 4 says enter the gates with thanksgiving i used to have to endure church when i was a kid he was boring i'll be honest with you he was not something I, it ain't that way at circle j cowboy church enter the gates with thanksgiving enter the courts with praise praise is what you do when you're rooting for your favorite football team and the praise is that and give giving thanks to him and bless his name psalms 103 verse 1 says praise the lord Oh, my soul and all that is in within me. So uh, praise starts from your heart, comes out of you. Praise his holy name. Look at uh, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 15. That's over at the back of your Bible. Find that. Ah. Woo, thank you. Hebrews 13, verse 15. It says, though Jesus, therefore, let us continue through Jesus. Let us continually offer a sacrifice of praise, a fruit of our lips uh, that openly professes. So we're to say, we're to sing fruits of our lips. Their sacrifice of praise started this whole week when they were learning these songs and praying, communicating with me what I'm preaching about so it relates. I asked Marlon, can you learn that song, Heart of Worship? And Tommy added that, and they worked on that all week. Sacrifice of praise coming up here for the Lord, to lift up the Lord. The Bible says if you draw, lift up the Lord, he'll draw men unto himself. And so it's our sacrifice of praise, making that sacrifice. Why do we do that? Because we got a heart for worship. <laughs> it's just in Circle J Cowboy Church. John 4, verse 23, Jesus is saying this. Uh, in John chapter 4, starting in verse 23, he begins to go in why he likes worship so much. Praise is what we shout like at a football game. Sing to the Lord. Worship becomes a one-on-one -on -one thing that you say, sing in your heart to the Lord. And this is what he says he's looking for. Verse 23 says, but the hour is coming and is now where, there, where when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. In spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such people to worship him. Verse 24, God is spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. He's looking for it. <laughs> He's hunted down. He's trying to find a church that will worship him in spirit and in truth, like Circle J Cowboy Church. And so we worship him not based on what we feel, but what he deserves. Amen? It's what he deserves. 
And so we worship based on what he deserves, not what we feel. And the gates of hell aren't going to prevail against that. I don't know if you realize this. That there's not going to be any more preaching in heaven, but there's going to be a whole lot of worship. And so what does that say to you about the mind and heart of God? The last reason I want to give you the gates of hell are not going to prevail against Circle J is number three, we have a heart for people, big time. This whole church was founded on that right there. He says, go and make disciples. That's not go ask other people from other churches come to your church that are already decided. Make. You go reach the lost. Don't be trying to invite people from other churches here. Don't want them. God wants them here. He'll get them here without your help. But I do want you to fill this joint up with lost people that are going to hell. Amen. That's what we're about. Go make disciples. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And teach them to observe all these commanded. And if somebody tries to steal you from Circle J Cowboy Church, they don't have that right. They ain't supposed to go. It doesn't say go empty other churches and tear down other bodies of Christ. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you all this <laughs> all the time. Don't, I told a man the other day, somebody, he's going to such and such church. And if he, we get him here, he'll start coming to our church. And I look at fella right in the eye, right in the middle of the service. I said, you probably don't need to be here, man. If you're gonna, in a church, you go back to your own church. God put you in that church. You don't need to be here. We're not trying to reach church members. We're trying to reach. He looked at me like, you don't want me? I said, no, I don't want you. I want people that are lost and far from God. But if you want to come help us do that and God calls you that, you ain't going to have no choice. You're going to have to come here. And he looked at me. <laughs> I'm serious. We go make disciples, not steal disciples. Big difference. 85% of y'all sitting in front of me, I baptize. That's making disciples making disciples we have a heart for the unchurch this building was built because we have a heart our building debt is surrounded around a heart for lost people this don't look like a normal church if you ain't noticed it <laughs> it looks kind of like the end inside of texas roadhouse or something i had a guy tell me one time he said man if you just want a church you sure would make a good bar he felt comfortable and he gave his life to Jesus right there too because he didn't feel like he had to be something he wanted to come in this building that's important you know my story I was managing a little ranch we had about 450 mama cows and I was the trainer and I knew I needed to get my life right I knew better than the lifestyle I was living and I decided to go to church and the way I went to church is I went to J.C. Penney's first. And I bought me some little penny loafers, brand spanking new. And I bought, I swallowed five or six times while I was having to do this. I bought them little girly penny loafers, them little socks, them little skinny jean socks, you know. They look like pantyhose, but they're a little bit thicker. At least they did to me. And I bought some tan slacks and a little girly belt, you know, with a little dinky little buckle. I didn't want to run out there with my belt buckles on, you know. And I bought a light blue shirt, a yellow polka dotted tie, and a dark blue vest. I mean, coat. That's how I stepped foot in church the first time. I was 29 years old when I gave my life to Jesus. Y'all look at right here. If there had been a church that had a covered arena, I might have come to Jesus a whole lot quicker. There's a whole lot of people going to fill up hell that won't go do what I did. We have a heart for people. Amen? Denny Lemons, one of those top five guys that God used to start this church, is here today. 81 years old. He's been out here on a lift. All he does is he's just like me. He's a very smart man. He can spell words very creatively. He puts him post out. He can't spell his way out of a wet paper bag, just like me. But he don't give a flying rip because he's hunger for souls. And that's all Denny Lemons does. That's all he's ever done since he's been in this church from Bergen. He's been here at the grind and grit and grow and never quit. He's a national, he's 81 years old, nationally known mounted shooter, and he works here all the time. He's here every day just about. 
He's out there. Last Tuesday, we started our cutting small group. He's got the dirt ready. He's watered the arena. He's got everything. All I had to do is get the flag up and, and tell everybody where to bring food. You can make sure I got keys for this and this and this. Thursday night, he's up here getting things ready for the barrel race practice, and he's misspelling his words on the post, inviting everybody to come, and they just giggle at Denny. He's just like me. He's smart. That, that ain't stupidity. That is genius. Yeah, a smart man has to be able to mail. Yeah. It takes a very smart man to spell a word more than one way. So <laughs> well, me and Denny, we get along real good. But he's here in our service. I think he is. Where are you at, Denny? Would y'all give that old man a good round of applause? <laughs> he's 81 years old. He'll outwork 10 of you young men for Jesus Christ because he has a passion, a heart for the lost using that arena to reach the lost. Proverbs 11.30, check it out. I want to listen faster. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, but whoever captures souls is wise. Whoever captures souls is wise. Look at John 3.16. For God so loves all these people that he gave his only, his one and only son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. We prayed that scripture over all these people. First Wednesday night. We're going to keep doing that. Why do we do this? Because Circle J Cowboy Church has a heart for people. Look at Acts 20, 24. But my life is worth nothing to me unless I use it to finish in fin for finishing the work. Finishing the work. Finishing the work assigned me by the Lord Jesus. To work and tell others who's the good news about the wonderful grace of God. Life, I say it this way, life's not worth living or life not living, trying to reach others is not life. Life not living for others, a purpose beyond yourself is not life. So the gates of hell are not going to prevail against our church because we have heart we have a heart for a prayer we have a heart for worship and we have a heart for souls can I get a big old giant amen that's circle J cowboy church and you're gonna be so surprised when you look at how biblically founded circle J is CJCC you and and this month we're gonna spend gathering and praying and you're gonna understand why we're, God's made us so cool and why we're so different and we're gonna pray for all the souls and next month, in the month of March, every single message is going to be designed for them. Every one of them. And so we pray that you get them here. Give them the invitation. So, all right. So the last scripture I want you to look at, and I want you to look at this. I want you to turn there, is Re Revelations 2, verse 4 and 5. You need to see this. Jesus, he talks about a church that had lost heart. And Jesus actually said, I hold this against you. Now, how would you like for Jesus to hold something against you? Not good. He said, I'll hold this against you. Revelations 2, starting in verse 4. He says, yet I'll hold this against you. You have forsaken the love that you first had. He said, consider how far you fallen and the answer is he says repent turn quit doing the things you're doing turn repent and do the things that you did at first and if you do not repent he says I'm gonna come and remove the lampstand the blessing of God from your life the lampstand from this place so this is the church of Ephesians they'd lost their passion they lost their heart. They lost their excitement for God. They had become cold, religious, mechanical, going through the motions, just going in to help. It wasn't, they lost heart. My question is, this year, have you lost some of your heart with everything that's going on? Have you lost some of your heart? Have you lost some of your passion, lost some of your excitement? church is plan A, not plan B. 
Have you turned away from the church and making that your purpose to make a difference? Have you lost the heart for prayer? Have you lost the heart for worship? Lost some of your heart to reach the lost people? Then Jesus says, if you forsake even just a little bit of the love that you once had at first, he says, please consider how far you have fallen. And he says, please repent, turn. It's a beautiful word in the Bible, repent. Do the things you did at first. I want to ask you to pray. Now this is the biggest part of the entire service. Honestly, right now is the moment that we've all prayed for. Right now. Where you would worship the Lord, hear his word, allow the Holy Spirit to move in your life. And you get along with God right now. So I'm asking you, give this moment right now to God. Just say, God, please speak to me. Say that. God, please speak to me. I want to pray a very specific prayer for you personally. I'm not going to ask anybody to come up front or anything like that. I just want you, if you've lost some of your heart and you feel like this year has chipped away at you and you know that you need to go back to where you once were with the Lord. If that's you, I want to pray for you. I don't want to ask you between you and me. I'm the only one looking around. If you want me to pray for you to get that heart back stronger than you ever have, stick your hand straight up in the air as high as you can. I'm going to pray for you specifically. Stick it up. Amen. Hold it up for a second. I want to look. I want to look at every person in the eyes. Got your hand up. Look at me. If you got your hand up, look here. I'm gonna pray for you. This is fixing to happen to you right now. This is fixing to happen. God's gonna give you a heart like you never dreamed possible. Hold your hand up. I want to look at every one of you. Satan's trying to take our heart away, and he's done a good job. We're gonna come out of this today with a heart given back to us, a whole heart to God. Keep holding it up. I'm looking. I'm looking. Let's pray. Father God, I come to you. I've lost heart many times this year. We've lost heart in some areas. We come to you, back to you. We return to you with a whole heart today. Lord, fill us with the power of the Holy Spirit. We repent. We turn back to you. We turn back to you in the name of Jesus to do the things we did at first. We have fallen. We've drifted away. Lord Jesus, forgive us. We've lost heart for the lost. We've lost heart for prayer. We've lost heart for worship. In the name of Jesus, forgive us. We come back to you. We return to you right now in the name of Jesus. Give us the strength, the grace, the guts. The, the heart to step out to make a difference for you in Jesus name still every head bowed and every eye closed there's uh, people here that if you were to die today or walk out of this service and something happened to you you'd die and go right straight to hell and you know that you've pushed God away you've had opportunities but you've said no 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 Today is the day you're going to say yes, 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 you're going to say yes to Jesus. You know that's the right answer. If you want to say yes to Jesus and give your life to Jesus, that John 3, 16, for God so loved you, put your name in the blank, that he loved you so much that he gave his one and only son to pay for your sins if they're, they're paid for the only way you'll go to hell is if you choose to not accept the free gift of God through Jesus Christ. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. He says, no man comes to the Father except by him. So you've got to accept Jesus as your Lord, your Savior, your boss. If you believe in that kind of way, he says you'll have eternal life. If that's you, 
pray with me right now and say, Jesus, today I give you my life. Say that to him. Jesus, today I give you my life. You gave your life for me on the cross. Today I give my life to you. He said, for, just tell him, say, please ask him, beg him, please forgive me of my sins. name.